Bros Brisky never spoke to me. I have never met him. I do not know him from Adam. It was a to have spoken to my son, a flying uh, fast. Uh, yes, my son said this guy was appealing to people for assistance. Hello everyone, welcome back. So my people, Femi Falani respond to very dark man over alleged EFCC and Nigeria Correctional Service corruption. Look, I'm kind of worried and concerned on how this matter is really going, honestly. Why is the focus and blame only towards very dark man? Why is these people not talking about Bob Risky? Obviously, Bob Risky lied against Fass and his father, Femi Falani. Or are they waiting to know the authenticity of that link audio? Even the day very dark man went to the House of Representatives, you guys know that uh, Bob Risky refused to go. And they are not even doing anything about it. I think right now, what Nigeria is supposed to focus is the allegation against EFCC and Nigeria Correctional Service to know whether those things are true or not. Not about a very dark man who wants to expose, you know, the corruption that is going on in our system. Let me allow you guys to listen to Femi Falani and hear what he said and the action they want to take against very dark man. I think you in public, after that very controversial uh, story, uh, involving VDM and Bobriski. Uh, what exactly is your own side of the story in this matter? Well, so I think it's a question of uh, infantile radicalism. Uh, some of our young people are uh, uh, just... Uh, not prepared to look at the provisions of the law with respect to uh, the law on defamation. So they just simply go out there to embarrass people. Uh, I can say this without any fear of contradiction. I have assisted 280 people, convicted people, at home and abroad to get pardon. On one occasion, 200 Nigerians were convicted in Libya for drug-related offenses. But because the trials were conducted in Arabic, and none of them spoke Arabic, I petitioned the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. That commission, at our instance, I did a petition on behalf of Sarah. At our instance, the commission issued a provisional order like an injunction restraining the government of Libya from executing the Nigerians. Uh, 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 I think Abike Dabiri was then the chair of the diaspora committee of the House of Reps. That committee had appealed to the federal government in vain. But based on our intervention, uh, the court issue another, and we wrote to, I mean, two months later, uh, President Gaddafi, the late Muhammad Gaddafi, became the chair of the African Union. And we took advantage of that to write to him and appeal to him to pardon this Nigeria by complying with the judgment of the African Commission. And that if you do not, you will be showing a bad example as the leader of the continent, as the chair of the African Union. President Gaddafi granted our request and a granted pardon to the 200 convicted Nigerians on that throw. They were deported and brought back to Nigeria. On another occasion, and this was 2015, we appealed to General Muhammad Buhari, 70 soldiers, and a general who was demoted to the rank of a colonel had fought the terrorists. But they didn't have adequate equipment. Mr. President, since you set up a presidential arms procurement panel, which had confirmed those who looted the huge sums, over $2 billion, a amount for procurement of arms, please, can you grant pardon to these guys who were illegally, illegally convicted and sentenced 
the seventy soldiers were sentenced to death. The general, general any to ransom Kuti was demoted to the rank of a colonel and also jailed for six months. We got the army council to quash his conviction for six months, and we now appeal to President Buhari to pardon him happily. His rank has since been restored. He has retired now as a brigadier general. While we are pursuing uh, 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 the demand for payment of the rights, I mean, the, 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 the uh, entitlement of pension in 1991, 12 young people under 17 were illegally sentenced to death convicted of armed robbery and sentenced to death in Lagos by an armed robbery tribunal. Again, we stopped there. We rushed to the court to stop their execution. And when a civilian government came on board in 1992, we appealed to you, uh, the late chief, Michael de Todola, as the governor of Lagos State, to pardon these young people. They were pardoned. And so we already have a list of about 280 people. On no occasion, in none of these cases, has our law firm demanded for or received a dime, a cover, from anybody who has been granted pardon. Mr. Fernando, I was yeah. from Florida yeah. State. Yeah, so that there are those who will say, did, anybody, did Bob Risky anybody, actually anybody. reached out to... <laughs> Uh, to you, did Bobriski speak uh, or directly or indirectly to you? If that is not the, if that is the case or not the no. case, what are you doing? You've written a letter no. seeking a retraction of it. No. But what sure. are you, what are you doing to establish your innocence in what has been an allegation on this matter? No. <laughs> no, Shem. Uh, Bobriski never spoke to me. I have never met him. I do not know him from Adam. He was alleged to have spoken to my son, a flying uh, fast. Uh, yes, my son said this guy was appealing to people for assistance and he called my son. I think on May 4, there about this year. Please, can you give me three, uh, three million naira? to be placed in a special part of the prison. We we'll call it the VIP section. And my son asking, are you calling me uh, under the authorization of the superintendent of prisons? He said, no, please, don't call me again. I'm unable to assist you to bribe the prison authorities. And be very careful, since you're already in jail for an offense. Please, if you are going to call me next time, you either do it through the superintendent or you write a letter endorsed by the prison authorities. And that was the last. Somebody now said they listened to a tape somewhere and went out to lampoon and rather defend me by saying the guy had spoken to me. Of course, we are going to uh, examine the call ups. And my son has also said, this was the guy who originated a call to me. My son has never, never negotiated fees on behalf of anybody. On the contrary, my three children normally refer people who need assistance to me. And not those, in fact, my wife was asking our kids recently, why are you always sending people who are not able to pay our fees? Next time we are going to be charging you. So this is the position. Now what I'm going to do, I have resisted the temptation shown to file a criminal complaint because I'm leading a team of lawyers in West Africa campaigning for decriminalization of freedom of expression. We have succeeded. Uh, this campaign is being coordinated by uh, the Media Foundation for West Africa, of which I'm a member of the board, we have succeeded in getting Liberia, Ghana, and Sierra Leone to decriminalize freedom of expression. We are still appealing to other countries in the region to ensure that we respect freedom of expression. But that is not a license 
for defaming people, for blackmailing people. Once, and what we are saying, if you are defamed, in the words of the late Justice Olatawura, in the case of uh, one Kwan, the state, if you are defamed by anybody, please go out there and sue for life where you will put your own character in issue. In this case, we are not going to uh, file a criminal complaint. We will not be pushed to do that. I'm currently defending a couple of journalists who are standing trial, either under the cyber crime act or under criminal liability. But what you are going to do is to embark on civil proceedings with a view to restoring our integrity, my own name and that of my son, so that nobody will simply rush to the social media to defend any Nigerian. We want to make an example. In this case, we have asked for a retraction and an apology rendered to us. And that is not too much. And if we don't have a retraction, an apology acceptable to us, accepted by us, we are certainly going to uh, uh, initiate civil proceedings in the yeah. high court. Yeah, Mr. Falano, because this is actually not, I mean, I'm saying for the sake of the of the public, who are not seeing or heard from you in this matter, okay. who have the benefit of hearing your own side of the story. And that's why I brought it up. But uh, I know how painful this could be, especially if you have built a reputation so over the that, years. Shall, now, the shall, question please. here. Yeah, uh, so, the question, quickly, Mr. Falano, yeah. because of the main subject for which I invited yeah. you. Uh, I'd like to, you to touch yeah. on uh, the fundamentals aside the defamation or the libelous uh, angle to this matter. Is the alleged uh, uh, um, corruption involved uh, in our correctional service or with the EFCC about the withdrawal of the money laundering case uh, dependent on a possible inducement? Um, just in about 60 seconds, Mr. Falano, so that we can get to the substantive matter to, uh, for which we, uh, we are here. Sean, 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 I'm a former inmate of uh, the correctional centers in the country. I, I also do prison work. I've exposed the rot in the prisons more than any Nigerian. In one occasion, um, on one occasion, I did the report revealed that between 2005 and 2006, and I have a government report to this effect, that 197 people convicted of drug trafficking in the federal high court in Ikoyi, convicted and sentenced to prison terms without any option of fine, she never made it to any prison in Nigeria. Never. When I petition the authorities, I think they declared them wanted. Only one was found. The rest went back to the trade. I'm still pursuing this matter. Secondly, everybody who has been to the prison, either as an inmate, an awaiting trial person, or a convict, knows that in every correctional center in Nigeria, there is a VIP section. It is called the White House. It's for big people. It's for big men and women. If you are a man of means or a woman of means and you are sent, you are detained in our prisons or correctional centers, you are going to be accommodated in the VIP section in the White House. So I am rather, I'm rather um, surprised that the House of Reps was pretending not to know this, that a panel is being set up to know the state of our correctional center. But the Correctional Services Act of 2019 has made adequate provisions for checking the excesses of prison officials. I've just done a letter to the Honorable Minister of Interior, who is doing a marvelous job in that Ministry of Interior. I wrote to him a couple of weeks ago. Honorable Minister, by virtue of Section uh, 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 21 
of the uh, Correctional Services Act, there shall be prison visitors. Visitors to go to visit our correctional centers on a regular basis and write reports, recommend what the government should do to address to address problems in our correctional center. And the minister has called me to assure me that the appointments will be carried out as soon as possible. So for me, if we have prison visitors going to the correctional centers on a regular basis, independent people, public officers, judges, uh, members of the National Security Body of the Nigerian Bar Association as provided by the law. If they carry out their statutory duties, our country will not be exposed from time to time with respect to the management of correctional center. We do not have, we have, Nigeria has the lowest number of convicts in the world have regards to our population because the correctional center are now reserved for the rest of the earth, the poor, the underprivileged, or the masses of our people. A big man or a big woman does not stay. I mean, it's difficult to ask a big man to go to the prison. Even when they are charged, even when a former governor, a former minister is charged with uh, diverting billions of naira. You simply ask him to go to a correctional center for two days. They are awaiting yeah. the arguments on application for bail. So no, that's no. what is going on. No. It's only the poor that are railroaded, railroaded to jail in Nigeria. So my people, that is it. I hope you guys had what a Femi Falani said in this particular video as well as the action they want to take against very dark man if very dark man refused to render apology like this matter is really exposing a lot i never knew that rich men in nigeria never go to prison that prison is only meant for poor nigerians poor masses chai what a country my people that is it as i make i bring this update to you guys i hope you truly enjoy watching please if today is your first time here don't forget to subscribe like this video share it to your friends and family so that they will get the opportunity to watch as well thanks so much for doing so and thanks so much for watching i will see you guys in my next update goodbye for now